Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Khalil Doheny. I am the Senior Content Marketing Manager at Digital Niche Agency. Today, we have Vincent Bryan from Woosh. Vincent, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks, Khalil. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, while people are, are tickling in, uh, Vincent, do you want to kind of give a quick background of yourself and, uh, you know, let people know what we're going to be talking about today? Sure. Um, I'm the CEO and one of the founders of uh, Woosh Innovations, and I've been with the company uh, from the start. Uh, uh, today, um, we are going to uh, go on a little journey, uh, <laughs> uh, and we'll... Um, uh, I, I hope to take for those who have not are not familiar with us quickly get you up to speed on on what we do and what we're about. Um, but then for those who may have been following us for a while and so forth, I, I also hope to uh, give you an indication of where the market is and what's happening out there so that we can uh, uh, anticipate what is to come. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And I know you have a presentation that you wanted to, to share with us. And we're going to go through that presentation and we're going to have some time at the end uh, for, you know, who's ever attended today to, to answer some of your questions. But I do want to throw a quick disclaimer. Due to the SEC guidelines, there are some questions we unfortunately cannot answer on today's webinar. So that's anything that talks about the financials anything that talks about future projections or anything that that's terms related. If you want those information, please check out the Start Engine page. I'm going to attach the Start Engine raise link in the chat box below. So if you have any questions around um, all those things that I listed out, please check out the raise page. All that information is there. Just unfortunately on this webinar, we're not allowed to discuss those items. With that being said, Vincent, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um... And welcome everybody. I have no idea who's here, so uh, uh, forgive me if I'm not addressing anybody by name. Uh, so, um, uh, at any rate, let me get started here. I'm going to share a screen, and uh, we're going to start off by going through some slides, um, and uh, hopefully that that'll get everybody grounded real quickly. And then uh, Khalil is going to show us a a quick video, um, and uh, that video is actually a news report from a project that we had uh, some time ago, but it does a nice job of kind of walking you through the whole thing. And I think at that point, um, uh, we'll have everybody kind of on the same page as to what, what our technology does, and we can start to focus really on the business side of things, which is where uh, I would like to spend the majority of time today. I also uh, wanted to say up front that I the part that I enjoy most is the Q&A part. And so while I'm gonna go through a lot of slides and, and throw out, I hope, a lot of information to you quickly, um, it is the Q&A part uh, to me that's the most fun and uh, hopefully uh, useful to you. So we'll, we will definitely leave some time for that at the end. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try to share this screen and let's see here. Tell me if you got it, Khalil. Yep, I can see it. Okay. Um, hey. Well, it's not advancing. There we go. Um, as we all know, we're in this world right now uh, where the headlines um, are often about climate change and so forth. And that is not was not the impetus for us starting this company, but it is uh, created an urgent need for our customers. And so, um, and I think uh, just to take you through this real quickly, that paragraph below that headline um, is really what uh, the position that we find ourselves in, and in a uniquely uh, uh, good position so far as solving this problem and uh, and moving things forward. Because uh, heavens knows, uh, fish passage has been a problem for you know a hundred years. Um, but the attention on it right now, and that's what we're going to go through later, as uh, is is uh, at an all-time high. So, um, and uh, it's because of of the need for hydropower in order to deal with the solar and wind power intermittency problem, and because of that problem uh, of wind and solar only providing power part of the time. The transition time that the country requires from a public policy perspective to move to a clean energy grid 
it needs hydro. And so from our perspective, we just looked at that situation and said, um, well, there's a mismatch here on the timing. Uh, the fish can't wait that long with some of the dams up. And at the same time, uh, there needs to be uh, a solution here so that the fish um, can recover, um, but also uh, so that we as a planet <laughs> uh, aren't uh, headed uh, uh, to a place where none of us can recover. So um, fish ladders, many of us grew up um, going to a fish ladder on a field trip, um, but they are not as effective as we would all like them to be, because if they were, we would not be in the predicament that we are in. Um, and there is little recognition of that, generally speaking, in places where there are fish ladders. Um, most dams don't have any passage at all, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, so some quick facts. Uh, food and energy are the two of the largest industries in the world. That's, a play, that's the market industries that we're uh, addressing. Um, fish provide critical nutrients for the planet's ecosystems and are the number one protein for the people on it. Now that's not the, tr the case in the United States, but worldwide, that is the case. And worldwide, it is also the case that hydropower is the world's largest producer of re renewable energy. And in some states like the state of Washington and Seattle area where we are, it is also by far the largest uh, producer of energy. So um, as we talked just a minute ago, um, because, uh, because of this uh, conflict, um, vital environmental food and clean energy resources are lost today um, uh, due to lack of a viable options for fish passage. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Um, it means that in a latter situation, water, up to 10% of the water in any river going past a hydropower dam where there is fish passage actually uh, it doesn't produce power. It's coming down the ladder for the benefit of the fish, but we are losing that 10%. The fish need it to get up, but um, as the water warms up and it has been warming up, that ladder is also um, draining the energy of the fish. Um, such that they're having trouble meet, re reaching their spawning grounds. So um, to traditional custom and civil engineered fish passage projects made with primarily concrete, steel, and so forth, uh, uh, rebar, um, uh, they're too slow, they're too expensive, they're not adaptable, they're not sustainable, they're dumb in, that, in the sense that they're not data smart, they can't uh, selectively um, choose which fish get to pass. So you are not passing an invasive species, for example, and only passing the native fish. And, um, and they've proven that they're not safe or effective enough. And that's why do I say they're proven? Because um, while there are many factors, um, fish passage when there is none or it doesn't work is a certain death knell for the fish. Uh, so what we've what we came up with was a better way. Uh, and here's a quote from uh, Mark Johnson of the Yakima Nations. I, I love this quote. And there's another quotes that I'm going to uh, reference here today. Um, but he, the fish pass through without so much as a scratch. Also, you won't have to divert water as you do in the ladder system. Out here, the economy is all about agriculture and water is gold. Uh, that's what makes Wish such a great concept. So from a public policy perspective, you can see that um, from California to, to the East Coast in the United States, um, where water and climate change and power, um, and get what, what's in the middle of this fish, because it's a shared water resource. And, um, and from our perspective, um, where we come from is from the fish's perspective. So this is, the fish is confronted with these huge public policy things and, uh, and uh, there, there hasn't been a new, new solutions available to the fish. Um, so well, when, when fish fly through our system, um, they go whoosh. And so uh, that's, I wanted to let everybody know where that name comes from. It's the sound of that fish moving through that tube. And um, it's really in, um, it's about 2013 that the company itself focused um, its attention simply and strictly on fish passage. So um, I, I'm gonna uh, ask Khalil here 
uh, to play a video at this point. Um, it will give you a good overview. It's about three minutes long. Hang on, because once we're done with that, we will start moving forward into the into the the good stuff. All right. <laughs> Yeah, awesome, Vince. If you could stop sharing your screen so I can go ahead and share mine. Okay. There we go. There's something unusual going on at the Cleelum Dam in Washington State. See that long tube along the river going over the dam and into the lake? That's a fish transport system by Whoosh Innovations that gives migrating salmon a free joyride over an impassable dam. Its nickname, the Salmon Cannon. From the fish's perspective, this is a instantaneous transport over a large barrier that they never could have gone over before. That's right. This portable system costing around $10 million, about one-sixth the cost of traditional fish passages, uses a tube filled with air and water mist to safely transport migrating salmon more than a kilometer from the river, over the dam, and into the lake above. So here's where it all begins. The salmon swim upstream against the current, and when they get to this pass, they will naturally swim into the system, and that's where their incredible journey begins. Once inside, the salmon swim through a small waterfall and into a chute, which then takes them inside a scanner that makes sure they're actually a salmon. The scanner sends the information to our sorting computer, and the sorting computer switches this gate. And the gate says, all right, it's either going to the whoosh tube or it's uh, a reject fish. We're not going to transport that one. And this all happens automatically. All automatically, yep. And in the span of less than a second. Oh. But the real wow factor starts when the salmon is shot into the flexible tube like a rocket. Let's see that again in slow motion. So now I'm at the top of the dam, which is 50 meters high. The salmon travel overhead through the tube at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour. The entire bullet train-like journey taking less than 60 seconds ends with a final splash into the lake where the unscathed salmon swims off to spawn. The Yakima system historically had about 800,000 salmon returning here every year. That was the second largest run uh, attached to the Columbia itself. Um, and by the early 90s, because all of these dams were built without salmon and fish passage, we were down to three to 4,000. The return of salmon in the Pacific Northwest is especially important to the Yakima Nation, a group of Native American tribes that revere salmon. They built their economy, their religion, everything around the salmon. And so when they lost the salmon, um, it was a huge loss to them in, in many ways. Whoosh is looking to help solve fish passage issues around the world as well. If we can help address those issues of fish passage, which exist in every country, China, Southeast Asia in particular, and South America, due to the increases in hydropower um, installations that have been going on over the last number of years, that the technology can spread from here and truly be useful in other places in the world. And the salmon cannon has another use as well, at least for TV comedians. Let me tell you how much I love the salmon cannon. I love it so much. We made our own cannon this week. Let's see where this salmon ends up. The salmon cannon, bringing joy to both humans and salmon alike. Maylee, CGTN, Cleelum, Washington. Okay, let's see. I share the screen back here. Okay, um, so I, uh, hopefully that explained the technology and the way that it works. Um, I will tell you there's a couple of errors in that um, uh, news report that I'll just clarify here. Um, the system doesn't usually cost $10 million, though it could on a very big dam. Um, uh, it's usually uh, about 20% uh, of the cost of what the a traditional system might cost, a, like a fish ladder. Um, at that particular location, um, that was a very long tube. Uh, that was over 1,700 feet long. So um, 
and that's actually the longest deployment that we've ever done. And that, that dam was about 135 feet high. Uh, uh, we have done higher dams uh, since then. And um, I think what, what the takeaway from all of this on, uh, <laughs> that I want to get you to is uh, you're going to hear salmon cannon a lot and you're going to see a lot of people um, refer to the salmon cannon. Uh, because it's fun to say, and it, frankly, it gets uh, viral uh, attention when when it's said. Um, but the technology you actually saw was a, was a passage portal, um, and that means it's a swim-in system, and that's what you saw the fish do in there. They're swimming in and swimming through. So uh, it does have salmon cannon technology on it. Uh, it's the part that uh, propels the fish, but but the whole system is called the passage portal. Okay, let's see, it's not going. Um, and th that's just a quick view of it from a mechanical standpoint. So um, you can see that system that we had there at Cleolum had one tube. This, this particular one, this picture uh, is set up to do three and we can actually have as many as six tubes uh, going at the same time and have done it in the past. So um, now we're starting to turn to the investment part of, of things. Um, and I wanted to bring you along because we've got big plans here and um, and I uh, want, want to tell you, uh, give you the background here so you know where we're going and, and uh, convince you that we're going to get there soon. Um, so uh, I'm going to focus in on a, a project here in Canada that will be that was like no other that we've ever done um, and probably never will again because, um, that piece of the cliff right there uh, on the Fraser River up in British Columbia uh, fell off. <laughs> and uh, just to give you a little sense of size there, that's 180 feet wide um, at the river where it's narrowest there. And so that rock face, when it fell off, um, it uh, created a natural dam, a natural dam across the river. and. Uh, this is one of the great salmon producing rivers in all, all of Canada, um, uh, where millions of fish uh, were expected to return. And when that slice of cliff fell off, uh, while it doesn't look like much from that picture, I'm gonna give you a sense of things in a little bit, but that uh, where that arrow is pointing down, um, that's about a 15 foot wall of water. I mean, it's straight up. It doesn't look like it, but that's what it is. Um, again, another sense of scale, that person up on the edge of the cliff. And those rapids, which are just below the area that, air, that the arrow was pointed to, are about 10 feet high, just to give it a sense of things. So um, we were in a position, uh, we got called. Um, this was uh, initially we got called before COVID in 2019, and um, we had, we were said in approximately 20 days, uh, we uh, we have all these uh, expected to be millions of fish arriving, and, uh, and we came up with an idea that looked a lot like this. Our passage portal there is down floating on the river. You're gonna take the tubes and run them out around the corner. Um, that was moving too fast for everybody at that time, so they, uh, uh, tried everything, um, everything to, to get the fish past the dam. I mean, with helicopters and and uh, trap and haul operations and fish wheels and so forth. Um, but the next spring, um, uh, it wasn't uh, <laughs> any better. Um, even after some efforts to blow things up and get that rock to go away, it was actually more rapids. And, uh, and uh, suddenly, uh, they had the next run coming in for the following year, and uh, and we were brought in. At that point, they had um, decided that they uh, were going to create a, a platform down below with with the rock uh, that had fallen, and uh, and that we would then help get the fish around that cliff. You can see our system being installed here. Um, we were working with a construction company, so. Uh, the silver system in the middle is ours. That's the passage portal. And then the tubes will come out of the end um, and head up around the cliff there. Uh, everything else is um, water that they, uh, pipes, those big rusty looking pipes um, to uh, 
have the fish come up this, uh, this, this temporary fish ladder that they built. And just, just want to run through these pictures real quick to give you a sense of what was done in about 90 days um, to get to a point where we, uh, from April um, to, till July um, was the construction period. And then in July, we were up and operating and moving uh, thousands and thousands of mostly um, uh, sockeye salmon, some, some Chinook. Uh, uh, so what can be done quickly when there really is an emergency? And um, I think what's happened with climate change is that everybody's realizing that every dam is an emergency. And for the fish, they've known it's an emergency all along. <laughs> um, the tribes have known this is an emergency all along. Uh, it's been... Um, uh, us uh, who have um, the power to do something about it that had were slow to recognize that this was a um, actually an emergency. So um, what we created was this adaptable, durable, affordable system that could be deployed quickly um, and that is smart. Um, it's it's safe. Um, it's fast, up to forty fish per minute. So. If you do the math uh, on, on that, you're gonna end up with a number of around 56,000 fish a day is possible through a single one of those systems. And, um, uh, and uh, we can assure that the fish is gonna have a safe passage, uh, an effective passage through the tube once they enter, as you saw in that video. Once they go over that little waterfall, uh, it's, that's the only thing that they have to do. And in a matter of seconds, they'll be over the top of the dam. So I wanted to, uh, so what, what does this mean for our revenue and what happened and so forth? Um, I just wanna touch on this for a second. This is a quick historical review of our, um, this is all in our page if you dive into all the financials and so forth there. But I've in graphic form tried to show you what's been going on here. Um, 2019, that was that big bar project I, that we were up there. We we had just started selling our equipment after years of doing studies and um, and uh, doing for regulatory approvals and so forth. And in 2020, uh, uh, things really started going. We got that big bar project and another and another uh, ten projects or so. I got those started, and then COVID hit. And uh, you can see. Uh, what happened in 2021, I think, as we all remember, uh, we weren't, none of us were expecting um, uh, COVID to last as long as it did. And for us, it was uh, really tough because it wasn't that we couldn't uh, install things if if we were only allowed to, but the permitting that uh, the dam owners and operators had to do basically stopped. The government um, stopped processing those and 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 gave a waiver on their on the dam owners and operators to extend the time that they had uh, to comply, and so everything got pushed out. Uh, that's what's um, interesting about what's happening now, because those projects that didn't happen during that period of time are now coming all back on online. And so you're seeing here on that green line. Um, if I take out the that big orange line, which was that big bar project up in Canada. The trend has been up all along, even through this. Um, if I take out that revenue that was producing that, but we definitely got knocked back and uh, um, and are now um, uh, 2022 was it started started slow, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, but we can see um, that it's that the line's going in the right direction here. So here's more specifics um, uh, on the revenue side. Um, our sales revenue, uh, admittedly coming from a lower point um, in 2021, uh, was up uh, 410%. Our service revenue was up 460%. And um, uh, two other areas of revenue, um, basically studies revenue was flat. And the passage revenue, passages of service revenue, which is like what we did up in Canada with that big project up there, um, is is still at nothing because we need those systems back in and installed. And once um, up in Canada, once that installation went in that first year, uh, 
uh, and the emergency was over, so to speak. Then they closed the borders, and that was the end of that project for uh, uh, until you know sometime this year they opened up the borders again. So, so uh, Canada was was off limits, like much of the uh, the world to us. We're we're feeling uh, we're feeling good that we've uh, that things have turned around, and we're going to feel very good after. Um, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that's happening coming forward. It's uh, that time um, that was a little slower than we would have expected really allowed us to get clarity on our mission and what we're trying to do here. And so you'll always think back to what our mission is. Uh, save the fish, feed the planet, grow clean energy, and heal the environment. That's like, a, that's a, that sounds almost too much. Um, uh, and we don't believe by any means that we are the only solution to the problem. Uh, we are part of the solution, and um, and if we don't take action, it won't work. Just as if uh, you know we don't uh, take other actions, uh, we're not going to get there. But we think we are a critical key uh, in this process. So, um, from a market perspective, um, we see fish passage as the biggest opportunity at, at dams and so forth. But it's also invasive species removal. Um, and in some places like the Midwest in um, the United States, uh, invasive species removal is actually the issue. Um, they have so many uh, invasive carp that have invaded in the rivers and so forth that they are, in fact, um, uh, unable to, uh, the native fish, uh, to compete. And so they make up as much as 80% of the biomass in those waters. Um, we are delivering a system and are under contract. I've mentioned this in our some of our updates, um, but we next month will, excuse me, March, we will be delivering a, a full system in the state of Illinois for that we're calling the Guardian system, which works a lot like that passage portal system, but it's focused on um, just removing the invasive uh, uh, carp. And that's uh, really a pilot project um, and it will be on a full floating barge so that the uh, Department of Natural Resources in Illinois and University of Illinois can um, test it in a variety of locations and so forth. And um, hopefully that will uh, uh, prove to be a, a great solution to that problem. So um, the growth drivers right now, um, we also did a lot of work um, at the government level, oops, um, uh, to get the law to incentivize, to help get the law to incentivize um, action um, at these dams um, sooner than later. Uh, and we, again, we, the timing was just finally right for this stuff to happen. So we don't want to take credit for all of it, but we were definitely part of, of uh, uh, reviewing language and so forth. Um, but it's resulted in some really uh, uh, great things. Um, that first one, um, the dam owner and operator now, under the in, one of the infrastructure bills, we'll go through this uh, a little bit later, can get a 30% tax credit up to $5 million for putting in a fish passage system. Um, uh, uh, there is a lot of money that's coming out of the infrastructure bill and, the, uh, and uh, Inflation Reduction Act uh, into our space. Uh, and um, and the, I think a significant one that we got to talk about again is that 10% more hydropower production is possible. So if you have a series of dams on the same river that a fish has to pass, um, think about that cumulative effect of the water spilling through each one of those dams. That's a lot of potential power. So there is an incentive for doing this better. And if it's got to be better for the fish too. Um, and that was that was key to all those studies that we've that we've done and sh and shown over time here. So um, uh, quickly, what 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 are we trying to do? We're 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 when we think about the market, we think about it in a few ways: the West Coast, the Midwest, and the East Coast, and the United States. And since that's who I'm mostly talking to here today, um, that's where I'm going to focus. But um, West Coast is mostly uh, salmonid issues, uh, salmon uh, passage. In the Midwest, it's mostly invasive species. On the East Coast, it is 
um, shad um, and eel and herring and Atlantic salmon um, to varying degrees, depending on how far north and south you are. Um, we have activities um, that uh, we've been involved in projects in all of those places simultaneously. And, uh, uh, and each one of those um, is unique uh, unto itself. But from because we have this adaptable system, we can just change the size of the tubes and the, and the accelerators and so forth on there and, um, and meet, meet those needs. So um, we have uh, tried to use the internet certainly to make people aware of it. Um, but uh, we've also used Start Engine um, and uh, uh, as a platform, not only to raise capital, which is needed when we're trying to solve such a big, big huge problem, mm -hmm. but also because um, from a political standpoint, this fisheries issue is still, uh, it's its largely political. There's a lot of stakeholders that have, um, have an interest in this. And uh, the more uh, owners that we have from various parts of the country and so forth, uh, the easier it is to make uh, the public policy arguments that uh, that sometimes need to be made in these cases. So I, I just had a little bit of fun here on this page, but I, I love this uh, Gandhi quote at the top. Um, First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And that is really true uh, for us and um, and uh, I think fortunately for us, uh, maybe uh, uh, we weren't ignored as long as we could have been, um, uh, but uh, uh, they cer everybody certainly laughed for a while and that's where the salmon cannon comes and if um, comes in. Um, and then when we say they fight, uh, it's, it's, it's really the bureaucracy of the, the system as it's set up and so forth. But then ultimately you work your way through all of that and you start to see the wins. And this is where we see ourselves is that transition right now from fight to win. And um, uh, I, I remind myself of this, this uh, uh, the, the first flight here in the United States was in 1903 by um, the Wright brothers and Orville uh, and his first flight went 12 seconds and 120 feet. And those fish that you saw going through that tube went 1700 feet in about 50 seconds. So look where we are today with um, uh, the jets and uh, and how far we've come um, actually since that uh, that news report that you saw there. So people do, they laugh, they have fun with this. Uh, but it, it's good because the message is getting across um, that we have solutions. We're finding ourselves in comics and films, safe passage if you go watch it I, and you can find that on the internet. That was about our project up in Canada, um, a documentary. Um, and this is what's resulting right now. Um, I, I know there's a pile of numbers there and they're in the hundreds of millions and billions. Uh, these are all uh, appropriations that came out of the Infrastructure Act in, uh, and, and passed um, Infrastructure Bill and the Inflation Reduction Act of monies going to the problem of uh, fish recovery. And so that doesn't mean it's all for fish passage by any means, but um, uh, some of these are. And we're going to focus on a couple of these right now at the federal level, and then I'm going to take you through the state level, and you're going to see why um, we're uh, looking uh, to prepare ourselves for uh, as these monies make it to the projects, um, which is just starting to happen. Um, the procurements are it's just starting to go out and we're just starting to respond, as you'll see. Um, so I'm going to focus on this one, 553.6 million for because we were directly involved in this one, including environmental improvements. That The definition of that um, environmental improvement is adding improving safe and effective fish passage, including new or upgraded turbine technology, fish ladders, fishways, and all other associated technology equipment or other fish passage technology to a qualified hydroelectric facility. Uh, we were directly involved in the drafting of this language. This is law and that money is coming, um, uh, that 553 million is coming uh, uh, 
starting now, <laughs> um, it, by by later this year in the in quarter three or Q, Q4, it will actually make it um, to the to the projects. So um, we also, on a different grant, one from the Department of Energy and the Water Power Technologies Office, just a few days ago, um, we had applied along with partners and so forth uh, for various projects. Um, I'm not disclosing who they are. I'm not disclosing what they are and so forth. But you go through a process um, in getting this federal money to a project um, where you basically have to prove out um, what you're going to do and, and why you're going to do it. And uh, they give you an initial uh, feedback on that as to whether or not this is a project they are likely uh, to fund, or at least they, they want to um, they, they want it in the final uh, consideration. And uh, we had submitted uh, seven in this particular uh, grant proposal, and uh, five of the seven we were encouraged on. And and I'll just tell you, on the two that we were discouraged on, um, we actually think the reviewers did not fully understand what we were talking about here. Um, now, bringing this closer to home, because we've been in Washington and, and we didn't know at one point, uh, you know, a year or so ago, whether this COVID thing was ever going to, we started focusing closer and closer to home. And um, and our systems were initially optimized for salmon um, in the Pacific Northwest. And so it was logical that we uh, really focus in this area. And there was a big report that came out from NOAA Fisheries on the Columbia Basin. And uh, uh, this quote here would basically say, hey, we need to do something. And, and um, at the upper Columbia, um, where there is no fish passage at all, uh, we need to turn up the volume. Um, and uh, it's because it, it, you can see down below it says it's essential to provide passage in the blocked areas. So you can see where we are on the time here. I'm getting close. Um, so we did. We stepped back. We looked at a, um, the major watersheds in the um, state of Washington, and those red marks are where uh, dams are. And uh, uh, and there are many more. There's over a thousand dams in the state of Washington itself. Um, and then we've uh, been working with the tribes and the Upper Columbia tribes. The Yukuts are the Upper Columbia tribes, and uh, they've provided us with a letter of support um, uh, for our technologies and uh, as, a, as a means, as a path forward uh, to get passage in. And not just in, in 20 or 30 years, in now. So we had all that federal money coming, but the state wasn't... Um, really focused on the dams here too. So in the present legislative session, I spent a fair amount of time down in Olympia and my team back in Seattle um, and are with uh, uh, a, a consulting firm that we've been working with. Um, and uh, uh, we're requesting uh, an additional $10 million from the state now to accelerate the uh, deployment of these dams. And the, the language that's highlighted in orange here um, is intended to give focus because uh, to where those monies get spent. So it's intended to go to these big dams. Um, there's a lot of money going to uh, culvert removal and that kind of thing in the state. This is saying, no, we can't solve the problem if we don't solve the big dam problem. And um, and so uh, the state is incentivizing and making, if this bill passes, it's not through through uh, it yet, but we are um, optimistic. We've got right now bipartisan support uh, for the, to bring that this bill forward. And, uh, and the fiscal year in the state of Washington starts in July. So between now and July, uh, hopefully this is a part of the state of Washington's budget and, uh, uh, we can start working on this problem in the state of Washington where these dams are. It doesn't have to be just these dams, but all those dams that are uh, marked here uh, do not have uh, fish passage at all. Um, and so they would be candidates for the, that money to say, hey, um, you might do something different with this dam in the future, uh, but that from the state's perspective, let's get the fish passage going right now and um, and uh, uh, start the recovery efforts and so forth for those fish. Um, I, every good pitch deck talks about the competition. Um, 
it's it's not so much another company as it is custom uh, civil projects uh, that that we are competing against. And uh, uh, just uh, scoring this and creating a heat map here to give you a quick overview of uh, why for big dams, particularly where there's no fish passage at all today, um, the whoosh system is such an appealing uh, solution. Uh, so because it's because we can get it deployed quickly, as we proved up in Canada, um, and um, and because the system itself is smart and the data that it collects as the fish are coming through that scanner is uh, unlike any other fish passage system, it will allow the um, not only accountability, but it's working all the time, um, but we're catching, counting rather, every single fish that's coming through, um, not just a sample, um, which is uh, going to give the state fisheries managers much better data uh, to work with. And then um, it will allow a better management of the river waters and for both the fish as well as the operators of the dams because they're going to have um, uh, the best information. So hopefully um, with all of this uh, convince you <laughs> uh, that there's no time to waste. Uh, we need to invest today. Um, we're raising the capital now because uh, we did have an earlier raise where we raised about a million and a half dollars. Um, and uh, which was fantastic. Uh, we would like to do the same. Um, I will tell you that uh, uh, the uh, current raise is, is uh, one that is at risk of um, uh, not moving, not being available much, much longer. Um, and I say that at risk because of some rules um, on how much investment needs to come in before you can extend it and that kind of thing that uh, Start Engine has. Um, so I'm hoping uh, with this webinar and the information that we are able to fill that gap and uh, which uh, uh, in the next few days and uh, and that uh, we will be able to continue to raise the funds that are going to be necessary to make this all a, uh, a success uh, this year. By the time we get to the end of the year, um, we are um, uh, should be well into uh, projects that are coming out of all of that um, that money that's starting to weigh, make its way into the market. All right, that, that's that's it, Clil. Should I stop sharing? Yep. Thank you, Vincent, for that awesome presentation. Um, you know, before we even work together, I've been seeing this all over social media. So I, I see how how you know incredible the um, third party validation is, and and it's the word is really out there. Um, Awesome. We are going to take this time right now to answer some questions. Yep. Some are coming in. Um, I'm already seeing some questions that unfortunately we cannot answer due to that SEC uh, disclaimer that I brought up in the beginning. That is around you know, the return on investment, anything around the financials, um, any future projections. All of those questions can be found directly on the Start Engine page. If you, you, know, if you have any questions around that, please message Vince directly. The first question I do see here is, what are the natural ways you can see expanding your technology? Do you see yourself doing work in other waterways like busy ports? I, uh, <laughs> you know, that's uh, that that particular suggestion has not we have not considered um, the the enormity of the uh, of the projects. That are available to us right now um, are going to keep us uh, pretty busy, I think. From so there's a million, more than a million dams around the world. Uh, Fifty-eight thousand of those dams are more than fifty feet high, and only three percent of dams have fish passage in them. Uh, if you just start doing the math with the information on all of this, uh, um, you know we, we've got a lot of work to do here. I like to say um, if we did. Um, uh, uh, if there's 85,000 dams in the, in the United States, if we did uh, in, delivered 11 systems a day for 20 years, we could have fish passage on all the, on all the dams. Um, we, we've got a long way to go. So I think um, what we will be expanding is um, the species 
in the various rivers um, for the what we call facial recognition. We have that AI technology in our scanner system. And the more places we are, uh, the more image capture we will have, the system gets smarter um, and we can do sorting on more and more fish. Awesome. <clears throat> what is or will the average net new scale of a fish passage system for a small, medium and large dam? Uh, net new scale, did you say? Yeah, net new sale of a fish passage system for a small, medium, and large dam. Yeah, they're asking what the cost, the price of the system is. That, uh, yeah, um, you know that's uh, a really good question, um, and that's really hard to answer in without the context of the site. But uh, let me tell you uh, the range that we have uh, in products. Um, so we have about 15 systems that we sell. And, um, and then there are components within those systems that we can also sell separately. Uh, the, the, the least expensive systems, which would be not automated, not swim in, would be manually loaded and so forth, you know, could be $150,000 or so. And um, I think the highest uh, system we've ever quoted at a, a, a dam um, was in the $15 million range. Uh, most of the time, um, we are uh, significantly less than the alternative. And, uh, and that's why it's so, it's so specific to the site and the species of fish that are there and so forth. But um, we do anticipate, um, we're working on it right now, that we're going to have a standard configuration, a baseline configuration for each of those systems where we will place a price on so that uh, one of the things we're trying to do is re reduce the amount of time for sale. And one way we can do that is um, provide a standard system which people can build into their planning process earlier. And, uh, and then if they want to add another tube, another uh, thing, it's, it's an add-on rather than um, us customizing the uh, price and so forth for each, each system. I assume that you can address the need of fish passage in both upstream over a dam, as well as passage downstream back below to the dam. Yeah, um, this is a topic probably that I'm asked most often of anything. So uh, the system that we are talking about today, the passage portal is focused on uh, upstream passage. There are a few occasions when that can be used for downstream. Um, that's mostly focused on adult downstream passage, like a steelhead uh, coming down. Um, but where the issue usually comes up is with juvenile uh, out migration. And how do you get, if the adult has got above the dam, how do you get the, the juvenile down below the dam? And uh, we really think that everybody's defined the problem incorrectly. It, it is not hard for us or anybody else, frankly, to get the fish down. The problem is you have to go up first to go down if you're going to go over a dam downstream or you have to go through the dam and and um uh both are possible and the, and the results for the for the juvenile might be, not be so good um uh so our solution to this is a fish guidance system um and the intention here is to guide the fish to a location where they can then be safely transported down um that um, particular portion of it is, it's not always required there, um, where this problem that you're identifying, but it is in enough places that, um, while we didn't think we were going to be the ones having to solve this either, and, uh, we are preparing, um, a study for, and, and part of those grant monies that we applied for were for testing a guidance system that would allow us to get it to the juveniles coming down to the place where we can then collect them and transport them. Um, usually the, the juveniles are all over the, the forebay above the dam. And that's the problem is that they, they're, they're, they go places where you don't want them to go. So our intention is um, focus on the root cause. They, they lose, the flow slows down before the dam. Let's help guide them um, before that to where we can then transport them. 
How do you counter the argument that fish passage must be volitional in order to be natural? Volitional. Um, yeah. So uh, um, <laughs> I've been in, uh, in some discussions with Noah over their definition of volitional. Um, the uh, the volitional definition is uh, if a fish is heading upstream uh, that and they're trying to get up uh, over the dam that that is their choice uh, they have no and they can turn around at any point of time and so forth. However, if there is a dam, uh, any other system is not volitional. I don't care how. Um, anybody else wants to define it, even a fish ladder. Um, when a fish is trying to go upstream and they fall back, which is frequently on a, on a ladder, um, that is uh, not volitional. They were trying to go up and they fell back. Um, so the way we look at it is um, our system is basically one step of a fish ladder. It's just that the, the same step gets you all the way over the dam. And so, uh, it was the intent of the fish, not knowing how many ladder steps there were going to be, was to get over the dam. Uh, and uh, we've just made it a whole lot easier for them. So to me, it's a artificial um, argument. Um, and from the fish biology standpoint, physiology uh, standpoint, um, one of the things that we discovered in a study that we did in 2016 on the Columbia River was uh, fish that came up the fish ladder versus that came through the whoosh system ended up in the next week past three other dams and up as much as 150 kilometers ahead of the fish that had to come up the fish ladder the whole way. Um, so if I'm a fish, and that's what we're trying to do, think about a fish, I've got a limited period of time to get to my destination, usually before the water warms up too much or, or it's time for spawning. And we've put these barriers in the way uh, of, of their progression. Um, if you took down a dam a day in this country, it would take 234 years. It isn't gonna happen. And we're just recognizing that. That's not gonna happen. It can't actually happen either from a public policy perspective because of that issue we were talking about before. So there are dams that should come down and can come down and, and um, not saying, we're not making that argument. We are saying um, in the next 20 years, with the climate is changing fast enough, the fish are very can can adapt, but not as fast as they're having to adapt right now. And we are not going to make it. Um, the fish aren't going to make it unless we do something now. And that's the intention here. Let's get this going. Um, many people disagree with that. You know, we the, the U.S. Uh, transition to electricity started using much more natural gas you know, 20 years back, but it was a transition technology, or at least that's the way it was put forth. Um, and now we're moving off of that. It, uh, we need time um, to build the clean energy pieces and the fish don't have the time. There's a conflict. We're trying to solve that. Do you have any competitors? If so, what sets you apart from those competitors? Uh, there, there's nobody that does it like we do it. Um, and and uh, I, I went through that competitive slide there. Um, it's more the, uh, a civil engineered custom solution at sites, um, whether it's a ladder or a fish lift or a trap and haul operation. So that's what we would typically be competing against um, is that kind of a solution. But there is nothing anywhere like what we do. And there can't be because we have uh, patents um, around the technology. So uh, it, it, it is not that we, uh, uh, you know, those patents are important for us, for our investors and so forth. Um, it is not, though, however, um, uh, in any way that we're trying to uh, stop progression here. We want this to go as fast as possible. And we are not intending to be the, the roadblock on, on, on that issue. What would you say to an investor who is on the fence about investing? Yeah, I, I my, you know, the presentation was really, uh, I hope was addressing that. Um, it, it's been a long road to get here. Um, 
most investments, uh, you're still trying to prove the technology. Um, you're, you, you've got regulatory stuff that you're dealing with, uh, safety issues that you're dealing with, um, market acceptance issues that you're dealing with. Um, we, we are down to uh, execution <laughs> here. And, um, and, and the only thing that is gonna make, prevent us from getting there is not having the capital when we need it. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm rooting like everybody else that we don't go into a big recession because I, I, know, I know it's not easy for investors at this moment in time um, to be thinking about doing something like this. But um, uh, having said that, this is the time. Um, and uh, as you can see what happened in 2020, it doesn't take very many projects before we are um, uh, uh, the revenue uh, is such that we uh, surpasses uh, our expenses. Um, and so you, if you go back and look at our financials on our website there, we had a $2.3 $2. million profit in 2020. Um, we won't need to raise uh, uh, a lot of capital once these projects start coming in. So I'm, I'm telling everybody, this is the time. We need it too. Um, and uh, we are willing to take in as many investors as we can now, because uh, we see a uh, the opportunity, like I hope I expose to you right in front of us here. What if the dam has no electrical power available? Can the systems be operated on the solar on solar power with battery pack, um, backup or generators? Yep, uh, they can. Uh, and uh, I will tell you, when we were out at uh, that Big Bar project, um, there was no, uh, at the time, there was no roads, there was no internet, there was no power at that location. It was two hours away. Um, uh, they brought in diesel generators, which you could say, uh, but that was primarily to run their pumps, uh, uh, those big water pumps that they brought in uh, uh, for the fish ladder. Um, our system doesn't use that much power, actually, um, uh, other than the water that we need for this, the entry system, uh, the system runs on 110. Um, so uh, for the pump, we need 43, three phase, and that's where um, it would have to be a combination with uh, solar wind and battery backup. Um, and the, the system does uh, sit idle when a fish is not there. So it is not running continuously. It's just instantly turns on when, when a fish is seen by the system and, uh, and everything revs up in a, in a second there. So we're not using uh, comparatively a lot of power. If you've got a lot of fish, obviously it's running all the time. <laughs> awesome. We only do have a couple more minutes here uh, so we can answer a couple more. Uh, this question is asking if this broadcast is available on, will this broadcast be available on your website or start engine? Yes, it will be. This webinar has been recorded this whole time. So be on the lookout for that, for that recap video. Um, awesome. Let's see what else we have here. <clears throat> How are you addressing high dead dams, uh, Grand Khalid Dam? How far are you on your juvenile con collection systems for getting juveniles back through the dams with lower morality. Have you contacted the Colville Confederate tribe about your $10 million ask through the state or support from their leadership? Uh, yeah, I, sh I actually showed the, the letter from the uh, Yucca uh, and uh, the Colville we have worked with since 2018 when we did a pilot project with them. And uh, I was on the phone with Laura Robinson um, of the UCAT, which is their policy analyst just earlier this week, um, can't get, giving her a heads up uh, uh, here on uh, the, the, the latest stuff. So I think we're very much in sync. Um, in fact, uh, uh, I think they see us and we see them. Um, the, the opportunity for us and for them is that once we do Chief Joseph, the next dam up is Grand Coulee. Um, I told you we did a 1700 foot long system. Um, that's true. We did a pilot at Chief Joseph Dam, which was 235 feet tall. 
the height of a dam does not matter to us. If I've got a 1700 foot long system or 11, excuse me, 1100 foot long system, I can do a 700 foot dam. That's the tallest dams in the United States are 700 feet. It, it, because I'm not moving a column of water up, it is the fish that's moving through the system. Um, the, uh, the reality is uh, that uh, we can, we're very good at putting fish up or, or, or down, but uh, uh, up is not hard, which is usually the hard part for other systems. Awesome. Well, that is our time today for the webinar. I did take note of the questions that we weren't able to answer today, and I'm going to be forwarding them over to, to Vince, and he'll be uh, sure to address those on his Start Engine page. I want to thank everyone who attended today. Uh, for the webinar. Vince, I want to thank you for taking your time to you know, go through that presentation and answer some questions today. Before we do head out, are there any final words you'd like to leave the attendance uh, with today? Yeah, I, um, I'm going to just read that quote that I had at the bottom of the last slide there. It was from Bill Gates, and he said, "We you know, we always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years and underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10. Uh, don't let yourself be lulled into inaction. And um, if you can't invest uh, with us anymore uh, for any reason at this time, um, you know, then uh, spread the word um, because uh, we, we think we've got something pretty special. This ride has been a wild one um, so, so far as all the hoops we've had to go through and the COVID and, and so forth. But um, uh, we're on the other side of that. And uh, we think that... Uh, 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 the opportunity to do good in the world, um, to prove out that um, this is possible, um, is it's it's there. It's right there, and it's now about getting deployments installed and operating. And uh, anybody who's listening who has a dam wants to, we'll 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 be there this summer if you <laughs> just call us. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vincent. And again, thank you everyone who attended today's webinar and be on the lookout for that recap video. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay.